Highlands, 70 miles from Melbourne, a hundred nameless streams scatter together to make the Yarra, the city's river. But there's nothing in the city about the Yarra's source. It meanders down the winding valleys, lazy and careless, twisting and turning, stretching the 70 miles to a wandering 200. Sunlight dances in a thousand sparkles from every ripple. But the Yarra water is more than sparkle. It's the life of Melbourne's people. They're the cry. On the upper Yarra, men and machines are pounding the earth to shape. The shape of still another dam to hold water for the taps and pipes of Melbourne. The supply had to grow with the city. The Upper Yarra is the latest addition to a battery of dams storing water. The older dams have supplied Melbourne for years. At Maroondah, the stars of construction are gone. Man has returned the countryside to nature in a more formal way. Autumn gold makes a public utility into a pleasure drive. There are dams too on the Yarra tributaries to watch and where sanity, all holding water from Melbourne. This water flows along the straight line to the aqueduct, while the river wanders on out of the hills to the farmland. In spring, the orchards along the banks are filled with blossom, a promise of harvest. bring the river water to the market gardens, growing vegetables for the city, while riverside pastures sat in the streets and cows. The willow trees along the banks were foreigners when they came. They had grown to be part of the peaceful Yarra land. As well as autumn gold, there is spring gold, the blaze of the water. For miles along the Golden Avenues, there is new beauty at every river bend. In the spring stretches, the Yarra runs fast and high under the wattle bursting into bloom. This is a time to do nothing, except to enjoy the blaze of colour along the river bank. Here and there on the river's middle reaches, there are townships dotted about. At Lilydale, the limestone quarries strike an industrial note. But this is still the country, and the small towns are centres for the farms or for the weekenders in the Yarra Hills. This was once the land of the Aborigines. And on a hill overlooking the river, the last of the Yarra tribe of Aborigines rests.
country that filled Barrett's eye now fills the eye of the artist. Hands and skill touch the added color to shape of walls, or mold the shape of nature to the shape of dreams, or tap out words to capture the magic of the arrow for his completion. There's room to play along the banks of the Yarra, to ride along the old bush track, to drive over the new highways that follow the river, to use for games the sports grounds that were once part of the Riverside Park. It is near a town now, a string of bridges crossing it. Bridges to carry the people of Melbourne to their homes. The houses of the suburb look down on the swirling water, their gardens reaching to the river's edge. But the Arabend golf course still has a country look to it, although the towers of Melbourne are in sight on the horizon. It's beginning to be an industrial river. The factories stand on the bank and close to the river as they can get. Not for the scenery, but for the water. The Yarra has commercial value now, a sure and pure supply for industry. Pleasure launches travel down to the city between parks on either bank of the river for use and enjoyment. Pioneers built Melbourne on the Yarra because they needed fresh water. Their small village has become a great city, but the river still surges. Along the city's edge it makes its way, past railways, factories, warehouses, shops and offices. Through the 150 years since its discovery, the Yarra has watched Melbourne grow. The gum trees and the wattle have gone. The towers and chimneys of industry have come. But people still live by the river. Right in the city, houseboats are moored to make homes, where the first settlers made their camp long ago. And it remains a river for play, even where it becomes a road for commerce. Moving to the sea, it passes between the miles of wharves where ships from every part of the world tie up, unload, and load again. It is a rich river. The sparkling waters of the highlands catch in the dams, the farms in the lower reaches, the industries along the banks, the ships that sail from the mouth. These make the Yarra what it is. 